ketosis, I'm fine with that. But if your definition of ketosis is is just you know this, you know, what I would consider to be a, also a, a somewhat micronutrient void uh, diet that relies upon a hefty intake of saturated fats, I would say I'm I'm not a huge fan of that. And I I do have to say like I I have tried that diet. I was part of Jeff Volok's faster study where you know I ate a 90% fat based diet for a year going into that study, and it produced some remarkable benefits in terms of endurance capacity. But uh, I also experienced, uh, you know, borderline hypogonadism. I experienced a, a, a real significant impact on thyroid, had low energy levels, had low libido, uh, you know, low high end work output for, for harder workouts. And that was just due to the, to the massive decrease in glycogen availability. And now, you know, my approach is more of what I would be, what I would call kind of like a cyclic ketogenic approach. And what I mean by that is I eat primarily, um, healthy proteins, uh, produce, vegetables, plants, and primarily monounsaturated Mediterranean style fats throughout the day. I do not eat many carbohydrates at all until the very end of the day. At the very end of the day, I tend to do a workout that kind of temporarily places me in a pretty insulin sensitive state and upregulates glucose transporters so that when I sit down to dinner, which tends to be the one meal of the day where most people do want a little bit more freedom and flexibility, maybe it's a, a party or a, or a night out or a family dinner or whatever, that's when I'll have some red wine or dark chocolate or a little bit of sourdough bread or, or millet or sweet potato fries or, you know, typically about 150, 200 grams or so of carbohydrates. And, uh, and then I'm topping off my glycogen stores, my liver and muscle glycogen stores for the next day's physical activity and allowing myself enough glycogen to be able to maintain thyroid status, testosterone, even the, you know, the proteoglycans that help to make up my joints. And then, you know, but I wear a continuous blood glucose monitor. I've tested my ketones by the next morning. I'm easily back into burning ketones as my primary source of fuel. So it kind of allows you to, to have your cake and eat it too. When you just pay attention to your carbohydrate intake, maintain some semblance of physical activity, uh, you know, you're, you're going to reap the benefits of ketosis without necessarily, you know, having to, to, uh, create a diaper pants scenario by having MCT oil for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, a number of my patients, unfortunately, dive in to a ketogenic diet with a lot of MCT oil and or coconut oil, which has a lot of MCTs in it, and uh, suffer the consequences. You're, you're right. Yeah. And you're right. Normally, and I, I, I go into a lot of this in my next book, The Energy Paradox, if you're doing things correctly, you absolutely positively should be when you wake up in the morning you should be burning ketones for fuel if you are you know if you have mitochondrial flexibility and i think that's what you're getting yeah. getting to yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah you can have a wonderful big meal at night and you should be in ketosis by the next morning if you did things right yeah, and a lot of people argue that you should eat your carbohydrates in the morning because the body is in a more insulin sensitive state in the morning. And that that is actually true. However, like I mentioned, you can induce, self-induce a state of temporary insulin sensitivity by simply saving, let's say, a weight training workout or a high intensity interval training workout. And it doesn't have to be long. You know, we're, we're talking like give me 10 to 15 minutes prior to dinner, and then you're actually kind of opening up those pathways to be able to partition that glucose properly. And I gotta tell you, after after wearing this continuous blood glucose monitor for as long as I have, one thing I've found that, that I think also flies under the radar 